Okay, so we've seen a lot of talks today about uh, new tools and techniques and elaborations of things. Here I'm going to give a bit of an example of what happens when you go and put these into practice in a system. A system that's not necessarily for Haskell programming, it's a program that's for people in the real world. Um, one that uh, isn't a compiler. <laughs> it's an uh, oh, yeah, interesting thing, it's also uh, long running. It has to be very reliable. If your window manager crashes and you lose all your work, it makes Haskell look really bad, so pressure's on. Um, it's very effectful and it has a lot of user interaction. So how do we apply these techniques to that kind of program? And uh, this is me and Spencer, basically, in Hackman's. Okay, so a tiling window manager. Window manager, you use them all the time. A tiling one automates the placement of windows. It tiles windows across screens to maximize use. The mouse is usually optional. You can use the keyboard to control everything. Xmon is written and extensible in Haskell. And it has good support for multiple heads. Uh, it's very small, it has quite a nice uh, community, and it has a good logo. <laughs> it's all about productivity, though. That's the, the goal here, is to be more productive with GUI uh, programs. So nothing to do with programming at all, really. So the program is useful. OK, so <laughs> let's, have a, uh, let's have a demo. OK, so. We just forked a bunch of programs. Here they are tiled on the screen automatically. I'm running an X mode here. Uh, so we have some terminals. You can move focus around, type things, move focus down here. I'm using the mouse. You can move focus with keyboards. Can you see that going up and down? Okay, we can open clients with a keyboard. We can uh, close them. We can say so I've focused this client here. If I open a window, it will appear in the stack above. And then above and above, close, 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 all automated. Okay, so I didn't waste any time sitting there fiddling to get my windows from overlapping and so on. Um, we can, there are different tiling modes, right? Because a lot of it comes down to what kind of algorithms, how do you want to lay out the screen? You've got a tileless area. There's reflection and tiling. So by convention, we have one area that's for the working area, and then here where you dump all your other things. Uh, you can reflect them. We have a full screen mode where everything gets a full screen. Um, what else? You can resize like this, depending on your needs. Uh, you can move windows around, so up and down. Uh, you can sort of bubble sort windows into any place that you want, basically. <laughs> uh, oh, we can also move more windows into this area. So we can uh, you know, get any arrangement you want, basically. It's quite, quite flexible, I think. Um, we can float uh, windows, so drag them out over the top, so that not everything has to be tiled. This is a key thing with tiling window managers. Not every application likes to be tiled. The GIMP is a really bad one. It opens 800 windows when you start it up, and they sort of have to float and overlap. So you have to support this somehow. So we have a floating layer that floats in front, and uh, you can resize things and then tile them back in. Okay. Um, and what else? We've got, yeah, so sync float. We can, uh, there's, we've actually lost it here, but there's a status bar. The status bar is just an external program up uh, here. So Xmode lets you write a little hook that prints some text to standard output that is entered into another program that comes to menu bar. So there's no built in status bars. It's really very simple uh, laying out of clients. Um, and there are multiple workspaces, so you can. Uh, switch between them and do different things on each one. Okay, so that's basically what this thing does, and then you, you know, programming is uh, doing your daily work. We've been kicking around the idea of writing a tiling window manager for ages. 2003, Shay Erison, who usually thinks of these things before everyone else, started asking about doing it. And then in 2004, people were still asking. 2005, 2005, the middle of 2005, Shay's asked again, <laughs> 2006, I'm still thinking about it. So, I mean, really, we should have done it. Then Spencer just started doing it. He, I worked with him on the Summer of Code last year, and he's a good program. We, we tossed the idea around, and he just started doing it. A couple of days later, he sent me the code, and for about four days, we just hacked like crazy, and we had the thing working. And then finally, in July, Shay got to say, yay. <laughs> he has a Haskell Talent Manager. 
Compared to similar projects, okay, so this, this we start on why was Haskell good for this? These are common tiling window managers, ION, WMI, Met Metacity, or Metacity is one, a very large one in C, it's not a tiling window manager, but as you can see, they're, they're really big. 50 k is of C, 1.5 for DWM, which was really a breakthrough, it was a very much smaller, simpler system. Um, but they're all written in C, they're all really big. Xmonad, well, it was 500 lines in the point .2 release, 700 lines of comments, it's written in Haskell. So you can, and this seems to be, I've written a few other, other sort of similar Haskell programs that replace C programs, and they're all about sort of a third or quarter of the size. The history of the project, well, we hacked like crazy at the start for about a month and a half, got the first release out. We have a week before each release where we just slow down and don't commit anything else except bug fixes. Number two, number three, and at the moment we just changed an API with the extensions so people are contributing lots of uh, updates. This is an interesting graph of the size of the project, the Haskell x project, compared to DWM, the, the nearest competitor in C, over time. So to get the thing working in C, you had to quickly ramp up to 1,600 lines. We got there with 100 lines. I actually thought we'd be done. I thought we were going to be less than 100 lines. And then slowly over time, basically the same shape, you get to your feature set and then you flatten out. But we consistently are staying one third, one quarter of the size. Um, and there's a couple of nice refactorings happen where we found data structures that fit better and you dramatically drop down in the number of lines of code. So we use lines of code as a bit of a heuristic for working out when um, code sucks. So if, if something gets really big, it probably needs to be rewritten. Here's a, a sort of breakdown of who's committing to the project. You think a tool written in Haskell, not for Haskell people, might struggle to attract people. Well, there's the two core developers, and then we've just picked up people all along who send us patches. It's been really easy. And this is for the core of the system. There's an extension library, and that is quite different. The core developers are down here, but all sorts of other people are just sending in masses of code to implement their favorite crazy windowing system. <coughs> Uh, and it's because we have a nice API, you write a little bit of Haskell and you get an amazing new window manager, basically for free. So this community builds up around the project and that's really helped. Uh, there's the mailing list, right? There's a hundred few, oh, there's almost 200 people now on the mailing list, so that's really good. Get a mailing list for any project you write, because then you let your users become your developers. And uh, one interesting thing, and I think people should do this more, publicization work on blogs, we actually just wrote about this stuff in blog form and put it out uh, on well, Reddit, this one place, and you get a lot of, I mean, people who find out about it, and they start using your great project, and, you know, feeding back patches. So don't just let your research projects sit and then people complain about them five years later that they're all bit right. Get them out there, get people using them, and you have to publicize. So we have some fans. There's some nice quotes here. They're really sort of weird, weird statements about people's expectations of Haskell. So, Xmon is easier and the fastest and the smallest memory footprint I've found yet. The window manager was one guy. But the best one I think is, uh, there's this Russian blog. Uh, he was analyzing the, the project. So this is a translation from Russian. And it's really cool. Suspiciously, I relate to any software written in the exotic languages of programming. Usually either breakers of tank or memory gorges much. <laughs> <laughs> but here, everything's written in the now fashionable Haskell. Very rapid, and memory does not go. So that's exactly what we want to tell people, right? So break down the stereotypes. So how do we do it? It's all about pure models of pure stuff. We have a model of the window manager state that the X server is tracking, a purely functional data structure. We find the API and we quick check guiding us towards what works. We quick check the whole thing, compile the result, and you're done, basically. <coughs> It's a, it's a list structure for workspaces. On each workspace is a set of lists. You have a cursor into this thing tracking which workspace and which uh, client is visible. A small set of operations on this structure. Here's the overall structure of the application. There's a beautiful pure core. <laughs> it's polymorphic. It's quick checked. It's very clean. Then there's a skin of uh, a little monad stack around it because this is an interactive unit stack, right? You've got events coming in, modifying your state, flushing it back out. A little bit of I.O. on the outer, and then the evil X server, which is the thing we have to talk to, and the source of all our bugs. And the thing that keeps everything working, quick check, 